Hi everyone, SoCal Marine. I would uh, thought I'd just do a quick live video here. I have an open machine. This is a 75 Johnson. Uh, I'm just going to demonstrate how the trigger and the stator work. So, uh, as you know, the flywheel has these magnets that are inside. Uh, they just look like this. And the flywheel obviously sits on here and spins around these coils of wire. And that's actually what makes electricity. They're wound around. Um, there's a almost like a square steel nut that is insulated from this inside there. And these get wound around. You'll see the wire goes across and across. This is how electricity is generated. Um, that's how God made it, and it's amazing. Right. Now, the trigger on the inside here, <coughs> um, as you can see, if you advance the throttle, can you see how it moves? It, it, as you advance the throttle, the timing increases, just like a distributor with weights, except this is mechanical, this is connected to the throttle. <coughs> so, it's safe to say that trigger wires, every time you accelerate, they move. So they do get a little worn out, but they produce low volts, maybe four or eight volts. They just send out tiny little signals. The timing is controlled by the trigger, <clears throat> the actual when it fires. And so what you'll notice, like here is sensor one. It's labeled on the shade here. But basically this, this little wire here is going to tell the pack to fire to cylinder number one see there then there's sensor 4 that's cylinder 4 and then there's 2 and this is 3 all right and what's critical on any outboard is that these wires go to the corresponding cylinder in order for the motor to run right now you can test these by just cranking with the motor not running and if you have a DVA motor you can just crank the motor over and it'll have hopefully enough RPMs to create you know voltage so you can probe each one of these um, and check that you're getting the correct voltage now if you want the motor to run and take tests these do need to go to the corresponding cylinders um, and as you can see here I have actually labeled this pack so S1 S2 this is from the stator that's these two guys over here first two terminals then we have the trigger one and the coil one and this is cylinder one over here and so what I would do is I would find sensor one there it is a little hard to see it can focus that's sensor one I would put sensor one over here a little fiddly here seems all crooked and then coil one would be this one. So I have been doing some tests here and I played around with some things, but basically the, the low voltage um, orange wire from cylinder one's coil would go over here. And then I have coil three, which means the next little wire for coil three is here, and then trigger three. Now, they call it a timer base, so I guess you could say whatever. What I'm trying to demonstrate here is that the trigger wires need to go to their correct cylinders in order for the motor to run. Now, as I've explained in my previous um, videos, this pack doesn't have any intelligence built into it. It doesn't know what's firing what. It's, it's, it's like a toaster, you know. It's like an amplifier. You, you, as I've mentioned before, consider this like the uh, the input sound wire. All right, this is the input sound wire, and the orange one's going to the coils. It's kind of like a speaker wire. So consider this an input, and this is an output. And as you, if you've watched my previous video, what you can do is, you can pretty much. Let's say we're working on cylinder one over here. All right, here's cylinder one. All right, sensor one. I know it needs to be paired to this coil. Actually, the coils don't really matter, but this, this cylinder one trigger wire 
needs to control whatever coil and wire is going to cylinder one for the motor to run correctly. Now that's cool because guess what? I can swap the little orange wires. Let's just say this cylinder has consistent spark and this one is intermittent. The first thing I can do is just swap these two wires and swap the two plug leads. And all that's doing is I'm basically making cylinder one use this coil from cylinder three and vice versa. If the problem stays on the same cylinder, then you know it's further upstream, i.e. at the pack or at the trigger. But if you've swapped these two wires and you swap the plug wires and the problem's moved, then it's very likely that it's a coil or a plug or a coil wire. Then the problem's local over here. So that's the first step you can do in in order to troubleshoot intermittent spark. Now, a lot of you guys don't have DVA adapters. The best way to look for an intermittent spark is to hook up a timing light if you can get your motor to idle and just point the light at your eye. If you're epileptic, don't try this. But look for a steady flash at idle. If you see a, a flash that's haphazard or coming in and out, um, I say at idle because obviously when you rev this up, it's going to flash a lot quicker. Um, so just look for like an idle or a thousand or whatever look for like a steady steady perfectly flashing at the same time light and you just keep moving the the connector to all these leads and if you see one that's like kind of dropping now and then then you got to hone in you got to you got to look into that cylinder all right so the first thing you can do with a timing light and a running engine is to see if you have a spark signal with a flash with a timing light that's erratic <clears throat> that's going to give you an indication of a cylinder that's giving you a problem now some of you might not have any spark that's a video for another day um, now you also have to make sure um, that I sometimes just clamp this into the socket because if you have the inductive pickup for the timing light close to another one touching sometimes you can get a, a an erroneous erratic spark so keep the wires away and hold this against the magnet in the pickup just make sure it's not flopping around because now and then you might you know get a sort of a bumpy spark just because this thing's bouncing around so try and hold this steady in the timing light so you can go through all the wires and look for something that's just not flashing good the next thing you can do is like i said if you know let's just say cylinder number three over here was flashing very well like solid same time no flashes dropping or double flashes and this one was giving us problems then I would flip the plug wires from a bad one to a good one and you have to swap the two wires going from here you can either do that at the pack or you can do it up here at the coil um, and these are low voltage so you know I guess you could probably if you have excess wire like this and you're really trying to troubleshoot you could probably just cut them and strip them and that'll allow you to just quickly change between things but anyways so let's just say cylinder one is um, good and three is erratic and I swap the plug wires around and I swap these two coming from the pack and the problems move then it's it's almost indefinite that the coil is bad if the problem stays on the same cylinder after I've swapped these coils then I know that the coils the wires and the plug are good and that kind of eliminates anything after the pack as being faulty and then I can move to the pack and I can go okay well I know that you know I can't remember what I said let's just say cylinder 3 was dodge we did our test and the problem moved when we swapped coils I mean stayed on 3 then I know that it's not the coil giving me the problem and what I would do then is I would follow the lead I'd go to sensor number three which is this guy and normally this guy would be on t3 so this one would be bolted right up here on the top right corner over there and i can be like okay let me let me see now okay and this is where you guys need to pay attention what i can do is i can take almost perform the same test i did before but now i'm also going to swap these around all right now, if I take the sensor wire from number one and three and I swap them here at the pack, 
then I don't have to swap them over here. So all I'm going to do is I'm going to take sensor 1, because look, the previous test confirmed that both coils are producing a steady spark. One of them was erratic. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to take sensor 1, and I'm going to take sensor 3. Now I put everything back to the way it was, alright? I'm going to swap these two at the pack. So where trigger 3 was, I'm not going to put trigger 1 in. So 1 will go in here, and then where trigger 1 is, I'm going to take trigger 3. Alright, and for the motor to run now, all I'm going to do is swap the plug wires. And all I'm doing is using a different channel in this pack. This pack has four channels. It has an input and it has an output. So all these T's are inputs, C's are outputs. This thing doesn't know whether I'm getting a signal from trigger one, two, three, or four here. All this thing does is when it gets a signal from here, it outputs it there, which means we can almost infinitely move all these wires around make sure that the coils correspond to the trigger numbers this pack doesn't actually care what trigger wire goes where it just waits for a signal and outputs a signal and then the energy is released from the capacitor that sits in here so you've got to almost look at this as an amplifier for a sound system right these are all your speaker wires going to speakers in your surround system and these are all the little inputs you know coming from your phono your phone your record player and your CD player and this thing doesn't doesn't actually know sorry my neighbor was shouting there okay so just to recap we've checked that both these coils work all right but we know that three is giving us erratic spark and all we're gonna do now is we're gonna swap the trigger wires between one and three at the pack and we're just gonna change the plug wires between the two we demonstrate here all right and all that's happening is I'm just gonna put these on like that all that's happening now is that instead of I'm sorry I'm repeating myself but I know that for some people this is kind of like a little bit of a huh that's why I'm going over the same thing many times so that I can start imprinting how this works because it's actually very simple once you understand but so really forgive me if you know what I'm talking about and waiting for me to get to the point. But I, I've kind of made it already, I think. So let's see which one's this three. Okay, so we're just focusing on these two right now. There's trigger three. There's trigger one. Okay. Now what we've done is we've just swapped them around and we swapped the plug wise. Now this test is going to tell us if the problem is at the pack or in the trigger okay so let's just say number three was bad right and number one was flashing good okay now what we've done is we've swapped these around okay if if one that was previously good is now using three's channel and the problem now moves from three to one then we know the problem is in the trigger because this pack, if it has a faulty channel, I'm calling them channels because that's basically what they are, um, it will throw the spark off no matter which one of these you put in on the in input and no matter which coil you go. If this channel is blown, it doesn't matter which one of these you put in, you're always going to get bad spark. And that's the key. And it applies to all these channels. And so all you got to do is find any cylinder that's running consistently good and put it at the pack on the cylinder that's bad and see because if if these channels are good if all these channels are good on the pack then one of these is causing a miss and so in that case let's whichever one of these is bad it doesn't matter which channel you put it in here if you can prove that any of these channels is good which is why you use one from a cylinder that's running well you can put any of these in there to check whether this is bad and that's literally a redneck way of checking whether your coils or your leads or something here is wrong 
then moving up to see whether the problem is here at the pack or up here on the trigger okay and that this literally applies to every outboard that's ever been made unless it's an electric outboard right I hope you guys are getting the picture now I'm sorry this is very long-winded but this is literally the quickest way to try and diagnose intermittent spark on one or more cylinder now this applies to more than one cylinder let's just say you know one was bad and two was bad but four and three are perfect we can just take any one of these as trigger wires and we can just one at a time test all the channels with what we know is a good set and change the input change the output and just make sure that whatever cylinder number is in the pack on the trigger side is matching the cylinder side on the motor now, like I mentioned if you're not running this and testing if you're just cranking because this produces volts just by cranking uh, then it doesn't really matter which cylinder you know because I'm not trying to get this engine to stay running if you have an ignition analyzer which I do which you can look at a graph of the ignition um, I'll actually show you what I use okay this is the GTC 505 this thing is an absolute monster um, this can't this is not really designed for any specific engine but it's designed for almost all engines and it is pretty incredible because um, I don't have anything running right now but you know you can go to like the RPMs and you can view it in a chart and if you have this on a running motor it'll basically just draw a graph there and if you have a, a drop on the spark it just drops and all you do is just hold this on a plug wire like this and you can instantly look for a spark drop I mean this tool is is above and beyond what you will ever manage with a multimeter but um, anyway so that's a great tool and you can use that so I've used that a lot now the problem I had with this motor is that there's a continuous spark drop but it's not all the way and I'm getting little shocks at the pack here like sometimes there's wacky stuff going on that what I've showed you doesn't show you which is why we're just replacing all this stuff um, because you know I'm suspecting okay I'm gonna quickly run you through the stator which is just as interesting so this is the trigger out of the way I think you guys have a clear enough picture now the stator over here check this out all right now on this motor there's only two wires that go into the pack right over here see there stator one stator two generally speaking um, I'm saying this off the record I'm not sure on these Evan reads I'm actually just gonna skip that whole section okay all this does now this is high voltage right there's only two high voltage things on this entire motor it's the plug wires and it's these puppies these things crank out the specs 250 to 400 volts and what this does is it refills the capacitor that's inside this box in a millisecond and every time one of these trigger wires comes around the magnet goes and it hits whatever cylinder it hits let's say it goes past one it sends a tiny little four volt signal in there to, to T1 it says hey I got a four volt signal because the flywheel just flew past me and it tells basically in this pack the juice that's stored in the capacitor from the stator wires to release the voltage to the coil in there so that little AC charge that's stuck in here gets sent to the coil and from here it gets boosted into like 40,000 or 60,000 volts and it, it hits the spark plug all right that is all that these two wires on the stator do now if you follow me up here you'll see there's yellow ones well what the heck do they do all these wires are for is to charge your battery nothing else all right two strokes don't need a battery to run I can I can crank this over with a starter and I can disconnect the harness plug wherever it is this thing will run on its own it makes its own electricity it's a completely self-contained unit all this does is to charge your little battery so that your little fish finder can carry on working and you can crank the motor over it doesn't even need these to run it needs these to run 
This is pre creating the power for the spark, is these two guys. Now what I'm suspecting with this motor is the insulation's broken down. Or maybe, I mean these are new OEM, I mean they're Sierra, they're a good brand. All the ohms pass, all the DVA tests pass. Uh, you know, so I'm just replacing this with new. I've had this happen before where I just can't figure out what's wrong with these things. However, we're carrying on here. Okay, now, another thing to note is these packs, at least these Evan roots, they have to be grounded at all times. If you try and run this without a ground, I believe you'll just blow it instantly. So make sure these are always grounded on every outboard ever. Right, now we're going to move on, do some more virtual troubleshooting over here. Okay, so you've done the tests over here. Let's just say, you know, your intermittent spark it's kind of like random and it's like all over the place or it's like on a whole bank of cylinders it's very possible that the stator could be the issue okay now what i've shown you here is just two wires okay that's because i have a single pack but on some of the mercuries you know like the 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 twin pack ones you know um you will have a set for one bank and you'll have a set of trigger wires and those two will usually have a color jacket on them they need to go to the same pack and the same bunch of cylinders then there'll be another set of duplicate wires identical to this that will go to a second pack and the electric diagram will tell you exactly what trigger wires need to go to what cylinder so on the mercuries you'll have one three five two four six and they'll each have the same pack same everything but they'll basically have two of everything and and the diagram will say the stator with the yellow jacket and the trigger with the yellow jacket need to go to let's say one three five or whatever and the other one obviously is going to go to two four six now check this out i can swap those around i can basically take the two packs and literally swap them around if i have a whole bank that's giving me trouble if you can swap the pack because they're identical and the problem has moved then you know the pack is bad if you swap the packs and the problems on the same side it's probably not the pack then you got to move up it's maybe the trigger you know something over there going wrong okay now this is this is the golden nugget moment right here think of a power pack as something you switch on a toaster a microwave something like that if it's faulty it's gonna create a short and trip your fuse in your house something along those lines now like I mentioned these yellow wires they're only for charging the battery so what I'm gonna to explain to you has nothing to do with these in fact these don't really ever make much of a difference unless you're having charging issues these guys however when you have the flywheel on and i have these in my you know <clears throat> hands over here and you probe that and you probe that and you spin this around you're probably going to see on a working stator 250 350 volts coming out of these puppies um now this is what's so cool if this pack is faulty and i'm getting let's just say 300 volts from this with these wires disconnected and that's just cranking um and I'm going to cover cranking in a, in a second. If I hook these up to a pack over here, right, and I do the exact same test, except I've now connected the pack and I got my probes over here. And let's just say the voltage goes from 300 down to 25, then the pack is blown. And instead of storing that energy in there, it's sucking all the juice that this thing's producing and it's, it's, it's destroying it, basically. So you can very quickly figure out if a pack is faulty or not. Test the stator charge wires that come from the stator to the pack. Freehand. Don't touch it, of course. It will shock. And then compare it with it connected to a pack. Now, it's understandable that I could go from 300 down to 280 volts. That's understandable. A small drop is cool. But if you're getting like 200 or 250 or 350 and you put it on here and you're dropping down to like 80 or 50 then this pack is chomping like 70 to 90 percent of the juice and there's something wrong with it 
a small drop I mean this thing's hardly even dropping anything I, I I don't even think there's a noticeable difference between connected and not okay so that's stator coil charging wires and by coil I actually mean the capacitor charging wires that's how you can figure out what's going on now if you're doing this test just cranking right if you don't have enough RPMs cranking these motors you will have no spark okay um, this thing the flywheel has to spin a minimum of maybe 500 RPMs so I have had outboards that have no spark the moment I take all the spark plugs out and I free up the compression suddenly I got spark on all four cylinders okay um, that's gonna be slow cranking speed which is either a starter that is very inefficient which is common um, it could be a bad battery cable or connection or a bad battery so you have to get a load tester or you could do a voltage drop you know put your DC voltmeter on the battery you've got 12.8 or 13 you go and start the engine if it drops to like 6 volts then your battery just can't put the juice up but a load tester is a lot more accurate they're 20 bucks